that's right. It's time. Katowice preview. You know the drill by now, guys. You know how these work. I am going to preview the teams that are playing at IEM Katowice. I'm going to be previewing the eight teams directly invited to the main event. I have covered all the other teams that will be competing at the event either here, bam, in this video, uh, or in the description down below, I previewed the other teams from the play-in. So basically any team from the play-in or any team who makes it to the main event, you can check out either on video or in written form. Obviously, we're going to go top to bottom, so we will kick things off with Nartus Vince. Now, as we know with Na'Vi, Blast Premier Spring Groups did not go all too hot for them. They did eventually end up qualifying. But to be honest, for the best team in the world last year and for a team that are a lot of people are asking the question, do they have an era currently ongoing? That was the bare minimum. The absolute minimum they needed to do was get out of that Blast Premier Spring group, which they did end up doing in pretty unspectacular and kind of unflattering fashion. Now, coming into IM Katowice, what are we expecting from Na'Vi? Honestly, we're still expecting them to be the favourites for the tournament. I suspect Blast Premier will have been a little bit of a hiccup just at the start of the season. I can imagine motivation was probably pretty low for an event like that. And I think back on LAN, back in Katowice, we're going to see the real Na'Vi. We're going to see particularly the real Simple. Didn't really show up all too hot of Blast Premier Spring Groups, but I'm sure he'll be back rocking and rolling now. I'm not really too worried about Na'Vi, and this preview is probably going to be the shortest because it's basically they should win it. They should. They probably will. Next. Now, the next team, obviously, Gambit, world number two right now, and deservedly so. One fun spark ulti pretty convincingly didn't take part in Blast. So we have a little bit to go on, not too much, but I expect much of the same from Gambit. Obviously, we still know they're not quite the same team on land that they are online. I don't think the gap is quite as big as maybe it was, let's say, around Cologne last year, but they're still not like, you know... They're not the imperious gambit that was winning every tournament in the first half of 2021. Um, but they're still very, very good. So what are we expecting here? I'm expecting top four. I've got to be perfectly honest. I think what we're really expecting to see from Gambit in this year is progression to really solidify themselves as an elite team on LAN. I think they need to win a big LAN this year to kind of eliminate question marks around their name, around whether they can do it in that environment. But honestly, I expect the development to continue. Um, they've got a really legit lineup. Hobbit, um, Shiro and Axile are all legitimate star level players at tier one, right at the top of tier one. They were all very high up on the HLTV top 20 last year. Nafani is a great in-game leader and I think an excellent player for what Gambit need. He provides some aggression. He takes space. He essentially is the tip of the spear a lot of the time for that Gambit team. Uh, and allows them to get stuff done on the T side, where I think if they had a more passive player, they probably wouldn't. And then Inters is Inters. He fills the gaps. He is kind of the bitch role player, and every team needs that. And Inters seems to be perfectly good at doing so. Um, a lot of people try and say, like, minus Inters, get rid of Inters, but I, like, I don't know who you're going to put in his spot that's going to do a better job than he is at basically being the bitch of the team. So, you know, if you're saying minus Inters, you're dumb. So yeah, really top four or bust for Gambit here. Expecting nothing less, anything less, be pretty disappointed. Next up is Vitality. Now, Vitality are a very interesting prospect this year. Obviously, the marriage of the ex Astralis or the majority of the ex Astralis core, Dupree, Megisk, and Zonic, teaming up with Apex, Ziwu, and Masuta to create a super team. Um, Blast Premier was... Not like an amazing coming out party for this team, but it was good. It was solid. They did exactly what they needed to do to convince people that this team has a strong future ahead of them. And that was win, basically. They just won all their games except for that overpass against FaZe. The one thing I would say, and I would put a little bit of a dampener on some of the enthusiasm surrounding this Vitality roster. I do think they're going to be good. I do think they're going to be a top five team this year. The question I have really is around firepower outside of Ziwu. I don't see a super consistent star fragger on this team that isn't called Ziwu. So I think that is potentially going to be a problem going forward. The other thing I want to reserve judgment on is I want to see when things start going wrong, what exactly are Vitality going to do about it? 
basically what I'm kind of, the question I'm kind of asking here is, is that cultural difference between the French kind of core of the lineup, the Danes who've come over from Australis, how are, is that all going to interact when things aren't going super swimmingly? That is, I think, going to be very interesting. I think in any case, a true test of a team is not when things are going well, it's when things are going poorly. And so I am very, very intrigued to see what happens to this Vitality team when they have a bad tournament, when they have a bad run of results. What am I expecting from them at Katowice? Uh, I'm expecting playoffs for sure. I think they're going to make playoffs. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Beyond that, mm, I don't know. Could they make top four? Could they make the final? Yes, I think they could. Are they going to win this event? I think if some of the other teams around them turn up in full force, like Na'Vi and maybe, for example, someone like G2, even if FaZe get ROPs back and they get rolling, I think Vitality are going to be hard pushed to win this event. I think it's a little bit early in the team's development. We haven't seen enough, basically, to say, can they beat a prime Na'Vi? We just haven't haven't seen enough of that yet to be able to predict it. So, uh, yeah, playoffs, top four at a push. Don't expect them to win this event, to be honest. Next up, we have Virtus Pro, obviously a relatively new lineup since the Major having added Flit for Sanji. Now, I know a lot of people want to talk about Sanji and say he played the bitch roles on the team, much like the discussion I just had about Inters on Gambit a little earlier in this video. Yes, I agree with you, Sanji did play the bitch roles. He also was woeful statistically, worse than a player like, for example, Inters, um, and... I think the main problem with Sanji is that he often didn't look quite on the same page as the rest of his teammates, particularly on T side. I felt like he really, really was lost on the T side for Verts Pro. It felt like he either wandered around not really having an impact on the round and just went wherever he was told to at the end, like, we're going A, we're going B. Okay, I go there. Um, or he would just be kind of disconnected and disjointed. Uh, there were a lot of times when Verts Pro would be hitting sites and he'd be storming out ahead of the rest of the team trying to create space and stuff, but nobody was playing with him. And so it was just very disconnected. He'd often run in and kind of just die on his own. I'm really not against the Sanji removal, honestly, for Verts Pro. And I think they've looked better since adding Flit to the team. I think the main reason they look better, again, is their T-sides. Virtus Pro's T-sides towards the back end of last year, before they got flipped, um, or I guess towards the middle of last year is probably fair to say, wo woeful. They were fucking awful. They really, really were. It was so painful to watch. They essentially, it was, you kinder go kill, or it was, we wait for one minute and 40 seconds, just waiting to see if Jane can get a pick with the orb. And then we'll just slowly walk onto a site and either lose or win. There was no dynamism to their T-side. There was no structure that was kind of coherent and, and something that I could see them relying on for like, yeah, they can get 60 rounds every time on this map. They can get 70 rounds every time on this map. I just didn't feel that about any Vertus Pro T side. It was basically a coin flip whether they were going to do well or just absolutely suck ass on the T side. Now bringing in Flit, I think Flit has a an aggressive lurk type style, similar to what you've kind of seen Glaive, I think, do in, in some of his best periods on the T side for Astralis. And I think what he's trying to do at the moment for Astralis is very much like the way Flip plays. It's a lurk play style. They go to a part of the map where they think they can find a gap, but they don't just sit there and wait to play the late rounds. They will actually make a play based on the position they're in. They'll actually try and get an opening kill. They'll actually try and find a duel. They'll actually try and aggressively take space rather than just do something like, for example, I think Blame F does, where he will put himself into a position where he's in a good spot for the late round and he'll wait for the late round. I think a player like Flip doesn't always do that. I think he's got a little bit more in his toolbox in terms of opening a round up and being a more aggressive presence with his lurks. Obviously, Virtus Pro's work at ESL Challenger was stellar. They went through the whole thing without losing a map. Uh, got run close by nine, nine ounces, nine Z. I don't, I don't actually know what the fuck that name, how that's supposed to be said. It, that's a dumb name, by the way, for your org. It's a dumb name. Go think of a better one. Um, but 9Z, 9Z, whatever, fucking hell. I can't take myself seriously any time I try and say that damn name. God damn. The bulk of the work that is impressive is obviously absolutely crushing Movistar Riders, who are sort of like a hovering around the top 20, I would say, kind of type of team. They're going to turn up at um, bigger events and be competitive. I don't think they're ever going to go too deep. So Virtus Pro kind of brushing them aside with no problems at all is really, really encouraging. And obviously, they rolled over Complexity. Don't think Complexity are great right now. And they rolled over Furia, who got a reserve judgment on, obviously, with their new player in the lineup in the form of Safe. Coming in to Katowice, I'm expecting VP to perform well. I'm expecting them to make playoffs. I think they could be a serious dark horse for making a deep run, like hitting a final, maybe hitting a top four. 
I think the biggest question about Virtus Pro ceiling for me is I'm not hugely sold on Buster uh, in their lineup. I'm not really sure what he offers. I'm not really sure what he does. But at the same time, he doesn't stick out like a sore thumb to be removed. So question marks, I think, around Buster personally for me. But the other, I think, cap potentially on their ceiling is how good can Yekinder and Flip be this year? I think that's the real question. Yekinder, obviously one of the best players in the world last year. I think he's lit such an incredible entry fragger, such an incredible aggressive presence, especially on the T side, and is absolutely a key linchpin to the way versus pro play. They would be so bad on the T side if it wasn't for Yekinder. Uh, and then Flit, now that Flit is there, he kind of provides a little bit of support to Yekinder. He kind of provides a little bit of relief for Yekinder needing to be so amazing. And if those two can hit like good heights this year, and James can continue being a superstar, then uh, like this first pro team, they could be a top five team. They could threaten for titles. They could be really good this year. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say VP mate top four. I'm locking in. Bam. Locked in. Next up, we have G2. Now, G2, pretty good at Blast Premier Spring Groups. Obviously, disappointingly lost that series to Vitality, but it's not the end of the world. Vitality are going to be a good team this year. And G2 have just brought the lineup together. I would say they have a little bit more to work on than Vitality because they're integrating Monacy, a player who has never played at the very top level, and they also switched out their in-game leader, whereas Vitality, at least the core of the team, are still the same, still working with the same in-game leader, and they've added two veterans. They haven't added, you know, a kid who's never played a tier one. I think the ceiling for this G2 lineup can be so incredibly high. We know Monacy's raw skill is nuts. It's just about how he can develop into a well-rounded player and how he can actually wield that skill on the server. Can he actually turn raw skill into frags? That's still uh, a question, I think, to be answered. But the signs of Blast Premier Spring were pretty good. I also think Jax was actually looking pretty good as an entry fragger at Blast Premier Spring Group. So if Jax can develop into a nice consistent entry fragger, if Monacy can start putting up the numbers uh, and looking really consistent, then this G2 team can again be super, super dangerous. I have an inkling that they're going to make playoffs and not make top four. There's something about this G2. It doesn't quite feel ready yet. Um, I think watching them at Blast, again, positive signs, but don't think they're quite ready to be like a really good team yet. I think they're going to need the next tournament is maybe where we're going to see G2 sort of ramping up towards full power level. So I'm going to say playoffs and no further for this G2, but I really would not be surprised if they made like a run all the way to the finals, for example. Um, I think the ceiling is very high. Where their consistent level is right now, I think he's probably a little bit away from that ceiling just yet. Next up, we have Heroic, and we've got to be bluntly honest, that Pinnacle Winter Series loss to K23 was incredibly uninspiring. Not a good way to kick off your 2022. However, on the flip side, it is your first game. Basically, you could just have been working out the ring rust, so we're not going to take it too seriously. Coming into Katowice, I mean, Heroic were like a pretty consistent top five team last year. However, Towards the back end of the year, they were never looking at all likely to threaten to take a title. They were always going to make playoffs. They were often going to make top four. But yeah, against the truly elite, they looked a little bit short. I think question marks still reside around exactly how good they're going to be on LAN. They've still got lots of young players who have not had huge amounts of LAN exposure yet. So there is definitely some room to increase their ceiling and to ramp up a little bit. I think coming into this year, they definitely have a huge advantage in the fact that they are a roster that has stuck together and been together for a long time. I think if they can harness that power, that familiarity, that comfort, that level of progress and development with each other, then the sky could potentially be the limit for Heroic. And actually, I, I would be, as a Heroic player, thinking... We need to come and hit the ground running at the start of the year because this is when we can take advantage of all these roster moves that other teams have made and we can be be closer to our ceiling. We can be more polished. We can be ready to fight for titles. Honestly, I think the expectations for Heroic should be to go deep, should be to make top four, should be to maybe even try and make a final. Do I think they're going to do it? No, I don't think so. I think there's something about this heroic roster that I feel has stagnated a little bit. The back end of last year was like quite uninspiring. The fact that they never really looked like they were going to threaten to win a title or make another final. It felt like they had kind of hit their 
ceiling, which was like, we're going to be the fifth best team in the world, no further. I could be wrong. We're just going to have to wait and see at this Katowice. I think Heroic are a team where I'm very reluctant to predict their level. I think we're going to have to wait and see with Heroic. Next up, we have Furia. Now, they haven't actually played all too much since uh, the Major, really. Like, if you look, the Major back in November, and then they didn't play for three months. And we got Pinnacle Winter Series, which was atrocious. Um, Visla. I think what we saw of Visla in the play-in shows that they are, again, short of being, like, a, a, a really good Tier 2 team at the moment. And Furia losing that is, like, again, pretty uninspiring, but... We can put it down to ring rust. They obviously looked better at ESL Challenger, um, but were nowhere near Virtus Pro. So coming into this year, I think Furia are going to have a little bit of rebuilding to do with Safe in the team. I think that potentially Vinny was a key part of that kind of core framework of Furia that kept them kind of ticking over and being like a really solid top team, uh, top team, blah, 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 top 10 team. Pretty much at all points last year. They were always going to be competitive. They were going to make playoffs nine times out of ten. I think coming into Katowice, the fact they've got Astralis as an opening matchup is good. Astralis are garbage at the moment, as far as I'm concerned. Um, made it through the play and I didn't actually watch the series against Big. So maybe there's been some improvements with Astralis as of late. But I still think Astralis are not a super strong team right now. And Furia will feel good about having drawn them as a first round matchup. As for how Fury can go in the tournament, I, I think Fury are, again, a team very much like Heroic. I'm reluctant to try and predict their level. If we're going off of last year, you feel like swapping out Vinny for what was a very good AWP last year in safe means they should be better, right? But I don't know. The early signs aren't really suggesting that they're going to be any better than last year. I would expect them early on to kind of hit the ground running at a sort of similar level, being competitive, a top 10 kind of team. And then we can maybe see in the next few tournaments how they develop from there. Katowice is going to be their first real test. So I'm going to say Fury and make playoffs. I'm going to say that. And no further. And last, but maybe not least, it, it, it might might be least. We'll see. Um, our liquid, uh, what are we thinking about liquid? I don't have huge amounts of faith in this lineup overall. I've got to be perfectly honest. I think Nitro is going to absolutely bottom feed as a fragger. I think he is going to really suck statistically for at least a few months. I think like I, I really, Nitro is going to be an anchor. He is going to be scraping along the ocean floor while the rest of Liquid try desperately to keep their heads above water. I, I don't think it can be understated how much of an individual liability Nitro is going to be. Overall, maybe he'll have an odd map here or there where he looks all right, but like over the average of 20, 30, 40 maps, he's going to suck. And then Shocks, I don't see what the point of Shocks is on this lineup. I don't think he brings anything or offers anything. I think it was a star name. I think it was potentially an, an attractive name to keep Naf around, honestly. The the fact that Naf said he he saw Shocks coming into the lineup and it got him excited and it was maybe part of what kept him away from the EG project. I wonder if Liquid just went for a Hail Mary signing in order to try and entice Naf into sticking around. That's me with my cynical cap on, but putting on my analyst cap, uh, I don't think Shox is going to be great for Liquid. He wasn't amazing last year for Vitality anyway, but what he did provide was a lot of very high impact rounds, and he was very good in like 2vx situations, that type of thing. Still a strong clutcher, still strong at making things happen in disadvantaged situations in rounds. So he had high impact a lot of the time on Vitality. Where am I putting Liquid's level? I think the core of Elige, Naf, and OC, I think that three-man core is, like, really, really good, and you could build a top-10 team 100% around that. I think Shox and Nitro are probably not the one. I think you could maybe afford one or the other, not both. I don't think Liquid get out of groups here at Katowice, if I'm honest. Um, I Like I say, I just think you can't have Nitro and Shox on the same team. I think it's one or the other. They're both going to be a little bit of a liability in the fragging department. They're both going to, I think, not have a lot of impact and maybe 
not make sense as an individual player in the team structure. Obviously, Nitro is the IGL, so he is a huge part of the team structure. But I mean him as a fragger and as a player on the server, ignoring the fact he's leaving the team. I don't think he's going to make sense in the balance of roles. It's like, what role does Nitro have? He's a support. Oh, you mean he doesn't frag? He's not going to be a support in the sense of, oh, he's a really great supportive player. He's going to play the bit roles. No, he's just a support because he can't frag. That's what's going on with Nitro. So, yeah, sorry, Liquid. Sorry, NA. I think Liquid need one roster move. And I think with just one good roster move, they could actually be a very, very good team. Um, maybe they should check out that Grim guy from uh, Complexity. I reckon he could he could take over uh, Shox's role and play some of the bitch roles and be good. That is it from me, guys, for this Katowice preview. I know it's a little bit brief, but honestly, there's not too much to say about a lot of these teams yet. I think this Katowice tournament is going to give us a lot of discussion points and a lot of information and data on which we can start to look forward to the rest of the year, build the picture for the teams, what they're going to look like, what their goals and expectations should be, and start to build some of those narratives that are going to be going through the rest of the year. I think right now... We're still feeling things out. I think some teams still, it's difficult to say exactly where their level are. This Katowice is the first really big tournament. It's the first test. And after this, we're really going to have some stuff to get our teeth into. I'm really looking forward to this main event. I hope that you guys are. As I said, if you want to check out any of my other previews, I will link the video in on your screen somewhere around my head. And the written preview I did will be down in the description. Don't forget, after the tournament, I will do my scores on the doors, telling you the grade I give all your teams. Make sure your team has done its revision, right? Done all its homework, because I ain't going easy on them, all right? I'm grading not on a curve. Fuck that noise. I'm grading based on my standards, all right? Thank you so much for watching, guys. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, tell your grandma, not your granddad. Don't like him. Uh, and if you don't like it, if you don't like it, oh, what are you like?